Hello and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her scented candle loving brother Ron. Love a candle. Hello everybody. Ron, I'm not going to lie, with the lighting in your room and from this angle, you look as hungover as I expected you to be today. I'm absolutely fine. Are you not hungover at all? No. I just look like shit, apparently. Oh. I think it is just the lighting, but yeah, it's really accentuating all of the, the bags under your eyes. No, I've, I've been for a run today. I made carbonara. Ooh. I'm absolutely fine. Did you go to pill? No, didn't run that far. I'm, I'm building up to pill again. Okay. Um, I've just been, I've been doing a, a, a lot of 5Ks. Ooh. Yeah, you were out on a pub crawl last night, weren't you, Ronk? Yep. For a friend of the podcast, Danny Pack's birthday. Oh, he was Miss Trunchbull. He was. That's Danny Pack. He did Heard very well. about him. Yeah, the costumes were epic. He's a lovely boy. Happy birthday, Danny Pack. Happy birthday, Danny Pack. Hope you have a lovely birthday. We forgot, we haven't done any birthdays on the show for a while, have we? No, I think nobody's told us about them, otherwise we'd have remembered mm. and said hi. It's also just occurred to me, I can't see the register in the notes. Oh, no, I can. Gosh, we're so prepared today. We Um, actually are. Well, you had a very fun evening last night. I had a very stressful one, Ron. Yeah, well, um, we we went on a World Book Day pub crawl for Danny Pack's birthday. Uh, Costume of the the day was sports, well, staff room correspondent Max, who went as Nasher Mm. from the Beano, and it was delicious. It was very good. And you went as Charlie Bucket... And listen, yes. am I a little bit insulted that you wore the jumper I made you to be an impoverished little boy that sleeps with his grandparents? <laughs> Maybe. But somebody saw you in it and said it was the nicest jumper they'd ever seen in their lives. Yeah, but I, it's the only woolly jumper I own. That's fine, Ron. Like I said, I'm choosing not to focus on the negative. I was you very... did bring it up. <laughs> well, y- you, you did wear the jumper. Um, but... Was well, I supposed to just not wear a jumper? No, but you don't have to wear the jumper I made you to it's be the a only, sad no money boy. It's the only, it's the only woolen jumper I just own. Got me out there saying like, "Oh, Laurie, your jumpers are really nice." Like kid, kids in poverty, that it's that kind of style. It's like povo chic. Nobody said that it looked back to front. That's that's great. Well, I'm glad you had fun last night, Ron, because I had a very stressful evening. So yeah, I'm sitting. You were on a, dumbins. I'm sitting on a train to London, right, and. Uh, and there's, I'm listening to my audiobook, really good. It's called The Great Circle. It's like a sort of split, you know, two stories going along in parallel. One is about an actress living in Hollywood whose life is kind of screwed up because she's a bit of a messed up kid. And she's. And playing... the other one's about uh, a Walker's Crisp? No. Or maybe a Rolo? No. Or um, a vinyl record. These are all just great circles. That oh, I can... crisps you think of as circles? They're quite circly, aren't they? Well, I guess, I guess no, they're, they're, It just wouldn't be the not, first thing I jumped to when I was trying to think not, of great circles. All right, they're circles. not great circles. I'd be like, ooh, crops or tits or... Um, well, no, because tits are as circular as, as potatoes. Not great ones. <laughs> Yeah, but what if it was a sarcastic, oh, great circle, then it it's could be not, about crisps. It's about the Arctic or the Antarctic, one of those. Uh, anyway. Anyway, carry I, on. I'm listening to this book, yeah? I'm having a really lovely time. And that's what comes on on the train saying, hey, this train's delayed. Can you go to the other train on the other side of the track if you want to get to Gatwick quicker? And I was like, I do. Hopped over, sat down, did my knitting, carried on listening to my book. Train pulled out the station. Suddenly, my headphones stopped playing me the Great Circle, Booker Prize nominated, because I've left my fucking phone on the other train and it doesn't lose signal to my AirPods until we're coming away. I was like... Oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? Luckily, the conductor on the train was really lovely. He, like, phoned back to the station and then let me sign in to find my iPhone on his phone. And then they couldn't find it on the train, but the train had been cancelled and was now locked up. But find my iPhone was saying it's definitely still there. It's like, looks like it's on the track. I was like, it's on the train. Find my iPhone has a feature where it's like, you can make the phone make a really loud noise. So we did that. And then the train crew managed to find it, put it at the station. But then I had to be so brave and do two shows in London, navigate my way round London with no recollection of where I was meant to train to trains, where I was meant to like, and it was so, stressful because I was on the train to Chiswick which required two changes 
on the train from Brighton. And then I was halfway up there and I was like, wait, is it Chiswick Station that I normally go to for headliners in Chiswick? And then luckily I had my laptop, so I had a quick look and I was like, no, it's Turnham Green I normally go to. And then I was like, okay, well, I'll just go to Chiswick and it'll be a longer walk. And then I was like, but wait, I can't do that walk without my phone because I have no idea what the route is. And, mm. and so I was like, okay, so now I've got to get to Turnham Green because that's the only way I know how to walk there from. So then I was like, shit, how do I now suddenly work out how to get to Turnham Green? And then the part of the district line was closed and oh my god it was the most stressed I've been in ages just suddenly not having the safety net of things that like get me out of the shit all the time <sighs> yeah I had London smartphones are central in London I did my first year of uni without a smartphone yeah wild yeah like I got through it all but everything was a little bit more stressful like having to work it out yeah. Luckily, I had my laptop because I was planning on editing and I did edit the cricket episode, which will be out this Friday. Ooh, um, and uh, you look like you're trying to kill yourself through most of that cricket episode. You look like you actively want to die. It's very funny. Yeah. Dad doesn't take as well as you do to just dismissing things that he likes. <laughs> no, me and dad get pretty like tunnel vision passionate about cricket and there are just yeah. long swathes where you might as well have not been there. Oh. Yeah. Um, speaking of Patreon, listen, obviously Kensington Palace have released a photo today of Kate Middleton with her children. Oh, have they? Ron and I have got huge opinions on this, but, but we are going to save all of those opinions for a special Patreon episode um, on the scandal coinkadinks uh conspiracy theories which we're going to do with royal correspondent max um we're going to record that this week so join the patreon if you want to hear our batshit nonsense musings on that you're also going to want to jump on because like cricket comes out this friday the live show in leicester comes out at the end of this month lots of fun stuff happening on there and i am putting your, the tea towel together as we speak it's not quite finished so if you're like shit i really meant to do that and i forgot scribble one off and send it off and as long as i haven't posted it off to be made i'll I'll add it in. Um, yeah. Why are we doing a Patreon episode on Steve Jobs? Can someone write in and <laughs> jog, jog the old memory? I think, hang on, no, wait. What, it was something, we were talking about Apple products or something. I vaguely remember us saying we couldn't remember if he was a problematic person and we couldn't remember if he was the business genius or a creative genius. Like, we couldn't remember what what his deal was and so that's why we were going to do one um that one's still in the pipeline it's still to come um tom mm. also said to me today ron as we we're walking into town oh i thought we were going to do a D campaign oh what happened to that I was really up for that so oh. we should get that back on the burner because tom's yeah. in Nice. Um, and i just wanted to say before we get into the episode which we are coming to very very soon um we have had to add new tour dates to my tour um, because Bristol is pretty much sold out. I think there's only a couple of tickets left and other dates are selling very well and there was a bit of a clamour for some areas that we didn't manage to cover. So we are announcing new tour dates. Best way to find out about them is to join my mailing list. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can jump on my mailing list. I really very rarely email so it's not like I'm going to be sending you offers every five minutes. Um, but do that and um, you'll find out about the new shows think that's everything from me uh should we do the episode ron yep okay enjoy the last physics gcse the last physics but how are we gonna do physics a level if you don't even like it at gcse i'll continue not liking it a level but won't it just be like all mind melty for both of us? Won't it be mind melty? I still understand it. I I have a physics A level. Oh yeah. Blech. Um. Yeah, I I did it. I. My A levels are in English literature, drama, performance studies, psychology, and critical thinking. Fuck me. I have uh, chemistry, maths, physics, and biology, and I did maths in one year, and then I had a massive DOS around in the second year, and it was great. You are such a nerd. Why? Did you not just hear me say I had a massive DOS around? 
Yeah, but I bet you didn't. I bet you nerded on other stuff or put more effort into the no, science. No, ones. I was larking about, kissing on girls and playing in a band. It was awesome. I was rad. Did you get all A's for your A-levels? Apart from physics. Oh, yeah. Well done, Ron. Physics sucks. Can you get A star at A-level? No, no I don't think a. so. Yeah, I got three A's and a B. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I need a new laptop charger. Do you know? Yeah, it's doing that blowing thing again. It is, yeah, I can hear it, actually. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. I've done so much exercise this morning, Ron, I'm really tired. Oh, yeah? I need my peanut butter sandwich to kick in. I did a big workout yesterday. Do you know I'm yeah. weirdly good at sit-ups? Are you? Yeah. I can do, like, over 100 sit-ups in a sitting. Wow. And Maybe you're doing them wrong. That's what I would suspect. No, I'm just really good at them. Um, and I do them with a kettlebell now. I hold an eight kilogram kettlebell. Nice. I still did 75. Do Russian twists as well. Yeah, I do those sometimes. I'm still, still, uh, rotund though. It doesn't do anything. It does. It's building up your muscles. Yeah. It's just not doing anything quick enough, you know. Sucks. Well, you want it to be slow and steady, Ron. I don't. I want it to be fast and jolting. <laughs> I um I'm doing single arm row with a 16 kilogram now. That's which I'm a lot. Proud of myself for yeah. yeah. And I'm having to buy a new kettlebell. I'm go I'm having to buy a 22 for my deadlift because I'm do having to do deadlift 18 on one leg to make it worthwhile. Wow. I'm so strong. You are strong. I'm a little powerhouse. <clears throat> so it's the last ever physics lesson today, Laura. Ever. GCSE. Never have to understand physics ever again. So. I can't believe the physics ran out before my gel pens. Why? Well, I just thought this would take longer. You don't make that many notes. No, that's true. And there's so it, lots of pens. Yeah, we're doing electromagnetism today. I thought we'd already done that. No, we did magnets before. And we did electromagnets. I don't think we did. I'm sure we did. You wrap a coil around and it goes electric. Did we do this already? Yeah. You get a little Bob Dylan magnet and then it goes electric and everybody's mad. Hey, Judas. Interesting. Uh, I don't think we did this, did we? I don't we? know, Ron. We did magnets so many times. That was the episode that made everybody worried that we were actually too mean to each other. I need to listen to this. I don't remember ever being mean to you in my life. You are always mean to me. No. The Earth is a magnet. Ferromagnetic magnets. Mm. Maybe I just looked at electromagnets in all of that brilliant research I did alone. Yeah, that was probably it. So when a current, Laura, flows through a conducting wire... There's a magnetic... We're just actually getting straight onto the science today, aren't we? No, we've been talking for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but five minutes is nothing. Current flows through a wire. Ugh. Even knowing it's the last one doesn't make it feel better. No, there's no end of term atmosphere, is there? Nuh-uh. It's quite shockingly dull. And it's really... The thing about a syllabus is that it doesn't have sort of a thematic arc or any kind of resolution at the end. It really does just end. Mm. Yeah, there was no warning. No. There's no, there's no, you know... Who ends with magnets? You want to end with gravity so you can do a mic drop. Very nice. Thank um, you. So... Yeah, when a when a when any current flows through a wire, oh, there's a magnetic field around the wire. Okay. Okay. Strength of the field, obviously, it just depends on the current. So, higher the current, the stronger the field, but also the distance from the wire. The same as the um, uh, the same as the distance from the poles in a traditional magnet affects. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The strength. On. Higher current equals stronger field. And bigger field. No. No. What were no, you saying about not the distance? What I said. Yeah. What did, what did you say about distance? Distance to the wire. Well, distance of what to the wire? Whatever. What? <laughs> the closer <laughs> you are to the wire, yeah. the stronger the magnetic field is. 
Hang on. <laughs> so there's an electric current going through a wire. Yep. And if you're a hundred miles away from it, you're not going to feel the magnetic field very much, are you? But if you're so, what you're saying is it's not the closer you are, the stronger the magnetic field is. It's just that the magnetic field is strongest closest to the wire. Yes. I just got confused as to whether my presence near the wire was affecting the magnet. You don't need to think about yourself <laughs> when you're considering electromagnets. Uh, okay. Um, field is stronger near the wire. Okay. Okay. If you shape the wire into a coil, which is a shape otherwise known as a solenoid. Fun solenoid. Yeah. That sounds like something you have removed from your nose. It increases the strength of the magnetic field. Oh, no, that pen hasn't really made that line smooth. That was terrible. I'm finding that the pastel gel pens have the terriblest drawing <clears throat> ability. Solenoid. Uh, increases the mag strength of the field or size of it? Strength. Okay. Why is that then? Why do you think? I don't know, Rom. You're the teacher. Why don't you have a think? It's the last day of term. <laughs> I'm supposed to be watching Mr. Bean. What, you're going to call our sister? Hey! hey. She got so mad about that. Yeah, she really did. <laughs> <laughs> we told our younger sister she had big bean energy. Yeah. She was furious. Child of the podcast now calls her Auntie Bean. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. I thought it was good crack. Um, and it's true. Yeah. She She's kind of... Slapsticky. Why do you think a coil, Laura? More wire. Yeah, there's more wire. That makes sense, doesn't more it? More wire, more problems. More wire, more strength of the field. <laughs> stupid is as stupid does. Uh, the magnetic field inside the solenoid is strong and uniform. Uniform? Like, a, like a policeman. I was thinking about policemen's earlier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Policemen's? That's not right, is it? Policemen. I was thinking about how Officers. they were called peelers because of Robert Peeler, who sort of came up with the police force. Yeah, and, came, and then he started that stage at Glastonbury. Yeah. Well, that's when he got into his music era, but that's also why they're called bobbies. Yeah. I don't know why they're called coppers. Um, let's find out, shall we? See, there's no point us doing this at A-level. Neither of us want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's derived from the Irish name Kigari. Kig uh, the term copper was the original word used in Britain to mean someone who captures. Oh. Uh, yeah, the term cop is recorded in the sense of to capture if you cop something. No oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Copper feel. Yeah, catch a feel. But if you cop for something, you pay for it, don't you? He copped for that. Yeah, you kind of like catch the bill, I think. It's like, oh, he copped for it. It's like, oh, he caught the punishment. Uh, yeah. Um, here you go, Laura. Um, the magnetic field around a solenoid has a similar shape to that of a bar magnet. Now, a bar magnet is one that's straight, not in the shape of a horseshoe. So, the magnetic field, I'm ignoring you, up through the middle is strong and uniform, and around the outside, it's like a bar. Yes. Got yeah. Like a little eraser that one half is for pen and one half is for pencil... God, do you remember when erasers for pens were first invented and it was, like, game-changing? Yeah, but they didn't really work for a long time. No, they were terrible. Basically, you just rubbed a hole in your piece of paper. Yeah. 
Just don't write in pen, my, my dude. Yeah, but we had to at school. Yeah. That system of however good your handwriting was to find which pen you used, like a real early class system at school. Yeah, I don't know if I ever made it to fountain pen. You've got nice writing, haven't you? No. You wouldn't have bothered, though. Like, I was fixated on that fountain pen. Yeah, that's the thing why it's quite so galling when you call me a nerd. I just like accessories and pens. Yeah, that's nerdy. Being... And I was nerdy in showing off, not nerdy in, like, sit alone and think about magnets. No, I I was nerdy in the way that, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Matt Damon's nerdy in Goodwill Hunting, you know? I'm... I was sort of like kicking about, having a cool time, but then I was wicked smart. Uh, kissing on Mini Driver, beating kids up at the basketball courts, being You've a never janitor. Never anyone up ever. No, I've never been in a fight. Should we have a fight? Let's do that for a Patreon episode. You and me just have a big fight. Yeah, you and me versus the Jennies. <laughs> The next live show could just be a cage match. (laughs) We select teams from the lab rats. They all line up and we just take it in turn one-on-one. And then it's just a no-rules brawl. Yeah. Last one standing wins. No no (gasps) touching of the hair or face. Ron, we should have a Lex Ed Sports Day. Why... (laughs) What's green earth would we do that? That would be a great listener day out. That's so weird. Why? They can't invite a bunch of people to a field and then just frolic <laughs> with them. <laughs> if there's anybody you could invite to a field and then frolic, it's the lab rats. Well, I suggest you do that as a solo show. <laughs> Or I will sit in judgment. <laughs> you can be the referee if you like. You you can do the medal ceremony. Can you get me a shirt that's stripy? Yes. And a whistle? Yes. Great. Then I'm will in. you come? Yeah, I'm in. We can have a sack race. Egg Let's do it on race. July 4th. Independence Why? Day. What, celebrating <laughs> losing the Americas? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hang on. Have you already got plans on July 4th? Is that why you said it? Let me see. No, I said it because it's Independence Day in America. Well, that's a Thursday, though. I don't yeah. know if that's a good idea. We'll do Ooh, that, and then we'll go... to the Bristol Tattoo Convention. Yeah, the, the t- tattoo convention we're all going to. <laughs> Are we inviting the lab rats to that? No. I am spending a lot of July with you. Are you? Yeah. Because we've got that that weekend, and then the weekend after, I'm gigging in Bristol so I'm coming to stay are you week, yeah and then well that's the not in the calendar no I haven't told you yet and then the weekend I might not I might is not Bristol Harbour Fest I might not be there oh well then you need to leave me a key what uh, we'll talk about this off air um oh, he's cross <laughs> where are you going in July uh we're thinking about doing some hiking ugh I actually love hiking. Yeah. How come you won't do any walks with me? Because you don't do nice walks. I would if I was. You like to walk. Your, organize one. Um, you just like <clears throat> to walk yourself into a bloody stump, and it just seems really terrible. It's not. It's fun. My laptop's annoying. Yeah, it is. Um, ah, stop. The desk is a mess. I hate mess. Ron, do you want to do any more science? Yeah, I just... um, To fill the episode, we're going to have to do a bit of higher tier stuff. Why? Well, because otherwise we're done. Oh. (laughs) Um, And I hadn't really expected to do it, so I'm just scanning it, just getting to know it. Um, oh, God, physics is so boring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're the one that made love to it for two years. I didn't. I used to, me me and my friend Humpers used to uh, play cards in physics. In the buttery? No, what? Oh, in your physics lesson. Yeah, in the physics lessons. 
which we got away with because we got good marks. Um, we did really um, distract Big John, and that wasn't fair of us. Um, and the teacher didn't really mind until one day we forgot our cards and then we sat there and we made cards out of paper rather than participate in the lesson. That's not okay, Ron. No, it was quite rude. That's bullying the teacher. Yeah. You were me in that situation. You don't bully me. No, but I do try not to participate in the lesson. Yeah. You bully me. I do bully you. It's because you're soft and easily hurt. Ugh. I really hear the earwax in my ear. Ugh. Oh, that is my Oh, I could horror. hear it too. Can you? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> that is the most gap thing that we've ever done on the podcast. <laughs> Ugh. Clean your ears out. <laughs> you ha- I can't. You can't put cotton buds in them. I do. <laughs> As we've already discussed, you are a rebel. <laughs> Uh, no, don't do it again. That's honestly no, the, the most disgusting do things. The other one doesn't do it. It's just this one. You must lie on that side and... Oh, no, stop it. Stop it. Or I'm leaving. Uh-huh. <laughs> 6.7.2.2, Laura. A Fleming's left-hand rule. It's got his left-hand rule. Oh, Fleming, he is pasteurising all of the milk. No, that was Louis Pasteur every time. <laughs> penicillin. Penicillin was Fleming. But it's a different guy, I think. Oh. I a new name then. It ought to be like Equity. They can't have the same name. <laughs> Fleming's left-hand rule. Yeah, this is after John Ambrose Fleming. John Ambrose Fleming. So, get your left hand, Laura, and go like this, and then describe that to the listener. What? We're holding up three fingers. No, but they're at different angles, aren't they? Yours are, yes. Yes, so do what I'm doing. (laughs) Fucking idiot. What are you doing? What you got? That one down. So, like, do a gun. Make a gun, yeah. And then flip the bird as well. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it should be should be right angles everywhere, okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you make a one-finger gun with the thumb up as the little catch thing and then let your middle finger flip out so it's coming off at a right angle to the index finger and then the thumb is going up. Yeah, um... Fleming's left-hand rule helps you uh, remember the configuration of which forces are applied in a magnetic field when a conductor is thrust into it. This is called the motor effect, okay? This is how electric motors work, essentially. The thumb... Is the the direction of motion. So, if you have, like, your coil here, Laura, and then you thrust in (laughs) a conductor... sort of using his thumb to fuck his other fist right now. Your index finger, pointer, that's the direction of the magnetic field that is produced. Wait, what? So, the thumb is what? Thrust. <laughs> Thumb is thrust. Index yep. is magnetic field. field. Yep. What is this? And then middle finger is the current. I mean, I've written all of that down. It looks like a bollock, but what what does that mean? So, have you um, you know how uh, you know how electricity is generated? I 
feel like we studied that. ACDC? That's a band. No, it's not. That's electricity. Alternating? <laughs> what? You're just saying things. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Ron, you're not talking back. Shut up, eh? Hey, what is happening? When a conductor carrying a current is placed in a magnetic field, the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other. This is just word salad. What don't you understand out of that? Well, it's not that I don't understand that. I just, I'm not really getting how all this links up or what it means in the world. So you get your hand. Yeah. Thumb, finger and middle finger. Yeah. Yeah. I understand my hand. (laughs) My hand was not the bit that was difficult. Current... Middle finger. Yeah. Field. Index finger. But what does that mean, Ron? You don't know. Is this just nonsense? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't about? know what this is. I, I, I don't know what we're doing. I'm just reading things out. <laughs> I don't... I don't think they've got enough physics to finish the syllabus and they're just wasting our time now. Let's just let's just log that away and move on. <laughs> yeah, whatever that was, it's gone now. Fleming has had the worst idea. So there's a formula. To go down in history <laughs> for. Look what I can do with my hand. It's a science thing. <laughs> no, 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 not your right hand. <laughs> Only your left hand. But it works just the same on you. No, it doesn't. Hand. They're not the same. Yes, it is. No, they're pointing in different directions, you fuckwit. Yeah, but it's not like... What? They're pointing in different directions. Yeah, but still away. Yes, but in different directions. Only the middle finger. Yes, so what, it always goes to the right? Yes, that's the whole point. <laughs> but what bit was that, the current? Yeah, so it says you can remember this. Cause you can't, though. It's <laughs> so nonsense. It's thumb motion. thumb motion. The motion. First finger, field. Second, current. <laughs> This is the first time I think I've ever thought this is incoherent bullshit, but it's not us. It's the syllabus. It's It's Fleming. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a. He was so proud of himself when he thought that up as well. He'll have said, I took the rest of the day off after that bit. I don't, yeah, it feels like they were having dinner at the Nobel Prize meeting or something. Fleming was there with his crayons. He didn't get a Nobel Prize for that, did he? Uh, No, no, yeah, I think they, you know, he was someone's plus one or something. Um, Yeah, uh, so there's that. Um, there's There's an equation for Fleming and his stuff. I, d- I, I don't want to talk about Fleming. I, I think he's not well. I think... I just think he's confusing matters. F, Laura, is force. What do we measure force in? Newtons. Yeah. Per centimetre. Newtons. Then there's a... Ca- so F equals B, I, L. Okay. Hang on. F... <clears throat> equals, equals capital B, B capital I, I, small L. So it yeah. looks exactly like the I. Bill! No. Yeah, actually, it's fine. What? I was going to say it's actually blee, but it actually really doesn't matter. Oh, no, it B-I-L, does say... B-I-L, you Yeah, think? it is B-I-L. That What's is, wrong with you today? I don't care about any of this. I don't care about that. So what do you think the B stands for, Laura? 
Uh, barometer. No, it stands for magnetic flux density. Well, how the fuck was I supposed to get that? <laughs> because, do you know what it's measured in? Magnetic flux density. Isn't that the thing that went wrong in Back to the Future? Uh, wasn't that flux capacitors? Oh, same I don't thing know, I've not seen it. Old, too old for you. Yes. Uh, Magnetic flux density. That is measured in magnetos. It's measured in bad, bad cars by a racist man. Uh, Honda Accords? No, Tesla is the uh, unit. Teslas. Yeah. I, we've come across before when we were doing circuits. Ions. It's current. Current. Measured in? Ohms. No, that's resistance. Volts. No, that's voltage. Or potential difference. Uh, Watts. No, that's power. (laughs) Uh. Imagine... The speaker that guitar music comes out of came alive in Beauty and the Beast. Amps. Amperes, yeah. Amperes. And then L is for length, which is measured in? Millimetres. Metres. (laughs) Metres. I've learned nothing. <laughs> no. So for a conductor at right angles to a magnetic field and carrying a current, that is true. Say that again, I was laughing. For a conductor at right angles to a magnetic current and carrying a current, a magnetic field and carrying a current, that's, that, that equation holds up. I just don't understand how often it's going to come up that there's a magnet with a wire coming out of it at a right angle. No, the BBC bite size thing has, like, stuff about it, but... Last bit, Laura. All right, Ron. Then we're done with physics forever. Forever and ever. It'll stay in the bin. Oh, yes, I do hate you. Oh, physics, you suck dick. You're so very bad. And you smell like moose poop. Do, 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 A coil of wire carrying a current in a magnetic field tends to rotate. This is the basis of an electric motor. Right. Student. Coil of wire. wire. Carrying a current. Yeah. In a magnetic field. But it was always a magnetic field if there's a coil of wire carrying a current. Not if it's producing... A magnetic current if it's in a magnetic field. How do you put it in a magnetic field? Put it in the magnetic field. Sorry, I don't understand the question. Put a magnet next to it? Basically. Okay, hang on. Just doing my drawing. Uh, Current tends to rotate. Tends to rotate, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Dad would be so proud of us if we knew how engines worked. Yeah. So. He's proud of me anyway. This comes down to Fleming's left hand rule, right? Because if you've got um, a field, that's your first finger. And then. I just don't know who comparing him. Back to this hand is helping, other than just beefing up Fleming's self-esteem. <laughs> it's because... Right angles aren't that hard to understand that you need to get your fingers out. Yeah, no, it's not just about the fact that they're right angles, though. It's about that specific configuration of right angles, which is why it's not your right hand, it's your left hand. Sure, but what's it doing? It's just... 
That's the configuration. (laughs) (laughs) So, if you so it it's like this, right? (laughs) If you remove, if you if you do any of these, the other two. So motion, field, or current. So if what you, do you mean by let this? me finish, huh? You finished it. Really uh, you haven't understood it. Let me finish now, because I think I've just twigged it. I think I've got it now. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're supposed to prep the episodes, Ron. I was playing video games with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you got your field, you've got your current, and you got your motion, right? So, if I have current and field, but no motion, that's going to produce the motion. If I just had current and motion, that would produce field. If I just had field and motion, that would produce current. You see? No. Why not? What was tough about that? I don't get it. Well, what do you mean, I've got motion? What's moving? So, um, a, a conductor or a magnet. But it's got to have a wire coming off at the right angle for the current to go that way. No. What's the current going through then? A wire, but it doesn't have to be attached to the thing that's moving. If I've... So if I've got, like... Yeah, if I've got a magnetic field and I move it next to a wire, that will produce a current in the direction of my middle finger. (laughs) If I have a magnetic field and then I apply a current across it, just using a battery or mains power, that would produce a force upwards, direction of my thumb, and therefore create motion. What would move? Uh, It would... uh, Something. Something that was there. (laughs) Yeah, I get this now. I get it all. Brilliant. I'm glad you do. Can't wait. Can't wait for your exam, mate. So then when there's like a, uh, then when it's a coil, I think the current's going all around, the motion is just like spinning. So it's a motor. Yeah. And that's the end of physics. Mm, Thank God. What a miserable little jizz spurt to end on. Alexander Fleming and his, what's the big finish? Look at my fingers. Pull one of them. Well, goodbye, physics. So long, our shit and useless servant. Ugh. The worst, least helpful one. See you for the quiz. See you for the quiz. (laughs) Quiz is in. Hmm? Max is in. Yes, Max. I haven't spoken to Max in ages. Yeah. To know what we're talking about, you need to remember intros, outros from last week. Are we only that far ahead? Yeah, because of mum and dad turning up at the wrong time on Monday, we were meant to get another episode in then, but then we didn't. And you weren't... And then I wanted to cancel right now because of brownie. And you uninvited me. You you should be glad you didn't come. Not a good time. Ugh. It's nice to see Dad. <laughs> um, 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 oh, we also need to plan our records for next week, right? Yeah, when are you free? No, let's not do it on air. <laughs> let's, let's make a nice episode, Ron. Let's make it good. It's the last physics, Ron. Yes, it genuinely is the last physics, because we did cover everything. Um, it wasn't... went out with a whimper rather than a bang. We got his left hand rule. I blame Fleming for the end of the syllabus, to be perfectly honest, because his absolute garbage idea. Yeah, his left hand doesn't rule. His left hand sucks. Yo, left hand sucks. Um, uh, yeah, like the last physics. Are you reading any cool books about physics that we can cover for a couple of weeks? No, I'm reading a lot of political books. Well, I've got a stack of political books that I'm going to read. That you stand on to kiss girls. Yes, kiss these Amazonian women that I associate with. <sighs> so quiz me, baby. 
Can't get worse. Never have to do this again. I do A level. I just don't think we should do physics A level. I think everyone hates it except the listeners. Yeah, I mean, that's always been the thing with physics. Yeah. Oh. You ready? Yeah. Um, so, first question, Laura. What are two things that affect the strength of a magnetic field around a wire with a current flowing through it? Whoa, what? Say that. I was thinking about something else. Can you say that slower? <laughs> what are two things that affect the strength of a magnetic field around a wire with a current flowing through it? My God. I feel like I'm having a dream all of a sudden. Because <laughs> you said that sentence twice. And all the words just won't stay in the line that they need to be in to understand them. Say it again. What are two things that affect the strength of a magnetic field around a wire with a current flowing through it? What's the beginning bit? <laughs> what are two things? That affect the strength of the magnetic field. Of a magnetic field around... A wire. A wire with a current flowing through it. <laughs> It's like trying to read baked beans. <laughs> also, I've written my notes in a really unhelpful green pen that I just can't really understand. Um, a higher current, Ron? Yeah. Great. Okay. You stopping there? What else do you want? What are two things that affect the strength <laughs> of a magnetic field around a wire with a current flowing? Be nice to me. I burnt myself. Oh, I didn't burn you. Um, sick burn, bro. Um, you didn't throw up on it, did you? No. Proximity to the wire? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, a friend of... Uh, we were talking about um, a friend of ours speaking a a second language yesterday and um uh, someone said um oh but no he really froze up actually when they actually spoke spanish to him and i misheard and i thought they said he really throws up when they speak spanish <laughs> to him <laughs> oh it was very funny very funny oh ron look at you being reduced to drinking from a lucas aid bottle because we've got your water bottle did you give it to mum and dad no. Oh no, oh no, why not? <laughs> well, because it was too high on the shelf for me and mum to reach, so we said we could. Are you actually fucking stupid? What? Tom put it on top of the fridge. So, oh my god, so you remembered it, but you're. Oh, stumpy little. <laughs> <laughs> legs just couldn't get it are you joking yeah. are you actually joking no. i'm seeing dad tomorrow i wanted that back well you can have it back but you just can't have it tomorrow because i couldn't reach it stand on a chair you imp i still can't reach the top of the fridge why was it up there because tom put it there's there. stuff all over your house it's like a stuff parade why couldn't it have been somewhere else because <laughs> it was up there out of the way oh of what, the people that were supposed to bring it to me? <laughs> like naughty children? Why? <laughs> Little Lord Waterroy, you can't just sit there in your crystal palace demanding stuff be brought to you. I can. You I can't. can't believe that you remembered but just didn't give it to me. I could. Oh, you it. could get onto the fridge if you wanted to. <laughs> Yeah, well, I thought we'd get it when Tom got home. And then we forgot. So it's still there. <sighs> and then you mock Sorry, me. Ron. Now. Who mocks you? You were like, ah, oh, I'm drinking out of Lucasade. Oh, wasn't that? I said, I'm sorry that you're drinking out of Lucasade. Oh, right. We both know that it's in between those two things. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, what's a solenoid? Um, is it a curl of wire? Yes. Watch hand. I just said watch. Left. <laughs> yes. Left hand, which is my watch hand, actually. 
because I always got told if you write with your right hand, have your watch on your left hand so you can check the time where you're writing. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> of all the times you have to check your time when you're writing, you know. I always was told to just have your watch on the hand that you don't wipe with. Ah. Uh, so you don't get a shitty yes, watch. Yes, you don't get poop watch. Poop watch! It's the dump time. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> What do the fingers mean in Fleming's left hand rule? Oh, fucking nothing, basically. Um, oh, what was it? It was like you stick them all out at right angles. One is the direction of the current, one is the magnetic field, and one is force. Which one's the direction that force will be exerted? Which in? one's which, though? Hmm. Let's say. Magnetic field goes up, force goes forward, current goes to but the right. But which fingers, sorry? I can't see. Middle finger is current, index finger is force, thumb is magnetic field. Only one out of three correct. Oh, but I did try and do that without my notes. Yeah, so that's, that's well done. Two out of three. No. Well, then there's no bonus to doing it without the notes, and I might as well use it. Yeah, because I've given up on that Thumb fight, is really. thrust, index finger is magnetic field. Middle, oh, middle finger is three thrust. marks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The notebook. Uh, yeah, Laura wrote it down. Book. Now, Laura, for a score of uh, out of 100, what is Fleming's left hand rule? Well, we just talked about it. Yeah, but what does it mean? It means if you put a current in. In a coil, you'll always get the reactions going out in those directions. So the magnetic field will always go up and the, it'll always thrust forward and the uh, current will always go off to the right. Which way is right on a coil? Well, well, I don't know. I didn't really understand what he was talking about. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand how you put a current in unless there's a wire going in and then surely it depends which where you put the wire. Yeah, it is about wires. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm going to give you 28 <laughs> out of 100. Sure. That's my lucky number, Ron. Yeah, all right. I love the number 28. Yeah. So because you knew that you'd beat Amy Winehouse and Kurt Cobain. I beat them in every possible perceivable measurement. Name a few. Um... Liver health. All right, ding. Mark. General health. Um, yeah, I'll give you another mark. Funness to be around. I think that's the on average. I think that's debatable. On average, what? no, because they would have very low lows. <laughs> so whilst they would have higher highs than I have, they would have lower lows. I don't think you can claim to be more fun than heroin, Laura. That, but they weren't heroin. And I said fun to be around, and someone on heroin is not fun to be around. All right, around. yeah. I watched Train Spotting for the first time last week. <sighs> okay. I've never seen it. Uh, I've seen the Polar Express. That's not the same. Oh. Uh, <laughs> How was Train Spotting? Was it good? Yeah, really good. I thought you'd have seen it. No. Is that about heroin? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Do you want to do heroin now? I might do heroin with your husband when we're old. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, that's the... You'll probably have to buy it. We won't know where to get it from. That's fine. Okay. What? There'll be loads of new drugs by then. I don't... We'll be able to do VR heroin. New drugs don't really catch on very often, though. Well, it's because the papers get cross about them. Because they're often quite dangerous. Yeah, like a knife. Dangerous like a knife. We must end. We must end. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, physics, you weasel. Hey, Ron. It was the last physics. The last physics. Well, we're we're recording physics this evening. Yeah. Uh, and hey, though, do you wanna do you wanna know what's cool, Ron? Uh, sure. You know the most annoying thing about this episode? Yeah, Apart you? from the physics. Do you notice how silent my laptop charger's been through this recording? 
I I didn't notice because that's just how it should be. <laughs> I bought a new one. Well done. A new laptop because the charger was making noise. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I threw the old laptop out the window and I've got a brand new one. I've kept the that's old That's why wire. we had to do all those redos. Ugh. Oh my God, Ron, on the train last night, I was trying to edit cricket, but um, my computer was saying like, can't edit because there's not enough processing speed, delete some stuff. And I was like, I can't. I can't delete anything. What if? Uh, so I'm sitting here. I've actually got my external hard drive right here to transfer a load of stuff over in a minute. Ooh, ooh. Um, do you want to do a new scientist feature, Ron? Uh, no. <laughs> well, there was Ron's failed segment back again. Um, if anybody's up for going to a field and frolicking, by the way, I'm up for it. Who wants to go to a field and frolic? Ron doesn't want to come. No, I, I don't do. want to hang out with you. Let's go to a field and frolic. Maybe just in the morning, I'll just leave the name of a field in the Discord and anyone that can get there, let's go. <laughs> the name of a field? Yeah, fields have names. <laughs> Such as names and fields. Uh, Acton Common, Turnham uh, Green. Are these fields? Yeah, they're fields. They're two I walked past last night, Chiswick. <laughs> Turnham Green. That's not a field. Yes, it is. It's right by Turnham Green train station. It's a. It's like a village green. Yeah. It's a. It's a, a park. That's a field. No, parks aren't fields. What's the difference between a field and a flat piece of grass? Well, this is like it's got paths and it's all been laundered. Oh, shut up! Fields have names, okay? Fields don't have names. Fields do have names. Names of some fields, right? Many fields refer to current and previous use. Names like the night field, the turnip field, the bull's paddock, the dairy field, sheep walk, fattening park, the rye grass, calf paddock, hen run, kitchen field, the drinking hole field and long meadow, to name just a few. I love how sassy Google got with that answer at the end. Yeah, but do you think that you could just put into the Discord, oh, the long meadow? Yeah. Someone's going to turn up. If I said what town it was in, it says, how do you name a field on a farm? And then it specifically says, fields should have names, not numbers. This may describe prominent features, the soil, wildlife, vegetation, tell us the name of the landholder or how to work the land. This is one of our weirder ends to an episode, (laughs) isn't it? (laughs) It is, yeah. Uh, I'm not sad about it. Um, Should we do the register? Say some thank yous. Now, disclaimer, I did write these when I was hungover this morning. I knew you'd have been hungover. Your tweets made no sense. How many uh, thank- tweets did I do? <laughs> he said that was one that really made me laugh. They said it would be a pub crawl, but this is a pub walk. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is Ron talking about? Uh, Thank you to Anne. Anne is the emergency services worker who pronounced physics D-O-A because that fucker is finished and will be buried in a shallow grave where the weather might surface the odd tod or shoulder and the crows can peck it. The odd tod? (laughs) I think that's supposed to say the odd toe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and thank you to it's a double d as well it's not even a simple typo there and thank you to se who is fleming's right hand (laughs) useless and servile dripping in clammy sweat and shaking under the weight of crippling ineptitude Thank you, Essie, and sorry you've got that horrible job. Um, well, that was it. That was physics, dead and buried until, well, for us, in like 15 minutes where we're going to record uh, a summary of the first five episodes. That's what we're going to do while we wait for the other um, subjects to catch up. Um, have a lovely week, everybody. Take good care of yourselves. Enjoy this step into spring that the world's taking, um, certainly in the northern hemisphere anyway. You southern hemispheres, I guess you're getting a little bit autumnal, and I hope you're enjoying that. Maybe Maybe you're looking forward to a certain woolly jumper coming out the wardrobe. Anyway, um, goodbye. Ron. Oh, class dismissed. <laughs>